Oh boy, here I go storming again. Hello miners, welcome back. It is finally time here. It is time for me to finally play Beseech the Mirror in Legacy. I have been super psyched about this card ever since it was spoiled. Instantly thought this this has to slot perfectly into uh, Saga Storm. It's got all the artifacts to be able to bargain away. It just it naturally fits in. So this is my first crack at a black Beseech the Mirror Storm deck based in the Saga Storm shell. Only real changes I made is I swapped out the Infernal Tutors for Beseech as our Tutors 4 through 8. Um, as such, I also swapped out Ad Nauseam for Gaia's Will as the Tutor target. And then I decided to go with a green splash due to all of the blue tempo decks that are running around currently. So two main deck Veil of Summer to replace Cabal Therapies. And then in the sideboard, I threw in Abrupt Decay to have a uncounterable way to deal with a lot of hate pieces to be able to punch our stuff through so like it deals with collector roof it deals with deafening silence it deals with chalice of the void um so just kind of trying to hedge my bets against that with the green splash for our sideboard trump cards i did decide to swap the basic island or the basic swamps out for bayous so that we actually had legitimate green sources of mana so we actually had a way to deal with those hate pieces when they hit the board after they hit the board. So, like, if you didn't have the Bayous, if a Collector hits the board, you better hope that you have your Chrome Mox or your Lotus Petal in play and your Abrupt Decay in hand so that you can float your mana and then kill it. This was kind of the hedges so that if you didn't have all those pieces already out on the battlefield or you had to try to find them later that you had a way to still be able to cast your green cards, like your Abrupt Decay, your Veil of Summer to protect yourself, stuff like that. Um, other changes are sideboard. I decided to try back with the Echo of Aeons. Um, I just figured with this one, with the fact that you've only got one guy as well, I've seen some versions that play two, um, but with only one, if it gets stuck in your hand, you need a way to recycle it. So I figured Echo of Aeons is a great way to do that. It's also basically a free mulligan if you need to. And then I also decided to throw Empty the Warrens in the sideboard. Um, just overall, I thought it was a good pivot plan. Um, it's a way to get around stuff like Leyline of Sanctity. It's a way to get around Veil of Summer shutting down your lethal tendrils. Stuff like that. Um, the rest of the sideboard, pretty basic shit. You've got your Leyline Helm combo in there. Expedition map and Haywire Might as tutor targets off of Urza Saga for grindy matchups or to get rid of other hate pieces. Another copy of Tendril, so you can hit off a Burning Wish in case you lost your first one. Fatal Pushes, just creature removal stuff. Um, I did take out Feed the Swarm. Uh, that's kind of replaced by the Abrupt Decays, which I already talked about why they're in there. But anyways, let's take this through, see if Beseech the Mirror really is as powerful in Saga Storm as I think it's going to be. Or see if maybe it was overhyped and it ends up just not being as good as what the decks were before. But anyways, let's take through League and see how it does. All right, playing some Black Beseech Storm today. Let's see how uh, Beseech the Mirror fits into a uh, Black Saga Storm deck, see how it goes. Um, my initial impression is testing this out. I definitely feel some tensions. The math is very awkward being so used to playing with uh, Ad Nauseam. Uh, this hand is awful and unkeepable, so we're going to ship this right off the bat. All right, this, this hand is keepable. We're gonna go ahead and keep it. I like the mana acceleration from this, but I like the guaranteed repeatable black source off of this. But then again, also, if we just keep the Chrome Mox and get rid of that, uh, I don't know. I'm tempted to just pitch this for now and go for a slightly longer game, not worry about turning on Mox Opal yet. Because I don't even have three black mana here anyways, being able to keep this whole hand. So I think we're gonna put Chrome Mox back for now. Like the triple black for Besiege is kind of a pain in the ass, I'm not gonna lie. 
All right, preordains. We're on some kind of combo -y bullshit. Um, that is tempting to fire off this thought seize early, since I'm very scared of this being like sneak and show or something. Okay, this the fact that we have a duress now is good as well. So we're gonna see what they're gonna draw. They're gonna draw a force of will. Okay. So that's good to know for the turn we want to try to go off. Take a look over here. Okay, it is show and tell. Holy shit. Okay. Um, I mean, we're taking the show and tell. Pinned it 100% correctly on combo. That's a stacked ass hand there, because that is an intuition into another show and tell. But we have multiple discard spells now. We just need another black source to be able to get off more than one. That is another black source. Is this enough to go off if they don't counter that? The question becomes is, are they going to counter it? I think we gotta try it regardless. See what happens here. See if they're- okay, they're not willing to go after our mana. So I think this is worth just trying to tear their hand apart here. We're taking multiple things this turn, like that's irrelevant. It's just a question of what we want. I think we take... Probably Intuition. Do we take Intuition and Force of Will or Intuition and Omniscience? What did they do with their Ponder? Their Preordain? One top, one bottom. So they drew what they wanted. Well, we're going to start off with taking the Intuition. Now the question just becomes is do we want to take the Force of Will? So if they top deck what they're looking for, they Cunning Wish only gets Instance. So, like, the Omniscience lets them be able to... Oh man, I don't know. This Brainstorm is interesting, too. I think we're gonna take the Omniscience, honestly. Make it so they have to top deck multiple things here. Yeah, that, that was an interesting decision. The problem is, is we don't really have shit else going on. Okay, they're gonna Cunning Wish for something. What are they Cunning Wishing for? Oh, they had an intuition in the sideboard? Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. The good news is, is we got the omniscience out of hand. So they can intuition for whatever the fuck they want here, but they still need to pay off. Yep. Yeah, you can have a show and tell. The question is, what do you have? Do you have a payoff yet? I guess the answer is yes. Emrakul, no god. And we know they've got a Brainstorm and a Force of Will in hand. I think we're just dead here. That was some really hot running by our opponent. Yeah, we're, we're just dead here. Okay. That was some hot running by the opponent. Um, we also kind of didn't draw the greatest, but whatever. Up against Show and Teal. Um... I mean, Haywire Might's not bad. Other than that, there's not really much we want here. Like, I honestly don't really think there is anything. Like, we can get rid of a Cabal Ritual, bring in a Haywire Might, and just try to run it like that and see how it goes. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Um, I don't hate this. I think we're gonna go ahead and keep this. It's a little defensive, but I like the Urza Saga. Assuming I can hit another land, I can try to keep them on the back foot and just start shitting out Saga Tokens. We'll see. Well, shit. Alright. Was not anticipating a Leyline of Sanctity, that's for fucking sure. Well, hopefully they don't have a turn one beyond that. Because at this point we're best just fucking popping off with, uh... Urza Saga tokens if we can. Luckily, we've got a we've got counter protection for if we can go off, which is why I let off on the Urza Saga. Because this way, we're ticking this up faster to try to hit additional um, spells. Chose to shuffle. That's good. So I think they kept us on the strength of the ley line. That's a besiege. I definitely like that. We still don't have enough mana to go off yet this turn, but I think next turn we do. 
And we just have to hope that they only have one counter, is basically what it comes down to. They don't land, okay. I guess we're gonna have to see how many counters they have. Ooh, City of Traders is great. That definitely gives us the mana that we need. So, I'm thinking we just grab a Chrome Mox. Because these Thought Seasons and shit are dead anyways, there's no point in grabbing anything else here. Because this is going to be three, four, five. This has all got to be black. Oh, shit. This all has to be black mana. Which means we don't actually get to go off this turn. Fuck. We could just grab Haywire Might here and try to set up for later so we can blow up... But all of their shit's at instant speed, so that doesn't really help. Because the problem is, is I need more colored mana here. Yeah, I think we'll just grab a Chrome Mox. Drop that. Because uh, I need one more actual colored mana source is the problem. Alright, so we're just going to play that. And then we're going to pass the turn. We had the actual raw mana amount. We just need to get a colored mana source here. Alright, shuffling off their brainstorm. That's fine. Just have it? Yep. God damn it. Alright. Good game, opponent. Good game. We were one turn too short. Alright. Lost the die roll. Again. Um. This is a really good saga hand. So I'm kind of tempted to keep it. It doesn't have a lot of defense, so you know, I think we are going to keep this. This is a really good saga hand. The double thought season is really good if they're on some kind of combo. It's relatively thought seize proof because they're probably just going to have thought seize a pot seize. Uh, Bayou could be anything. It could be storm into a dark ritual. I think we're just going to run out an Urza saga. We're going to just try to play the saga beatdown route here. I think I could thought seize them. See what they got going on over there. That's actually not a terrible idea. Actually. Hmm. Yeah, I don't hate double thought seizing them, to be completely honest. It's a little bit of a waste of mana, but I think it's worth it. This feels a little bad if they just, like, pop off a Veil of Summer here. Or maybe I hold... yeah. Mm -mm. I think we'll just do one thought seize for now. We won't double thought seize them yet. This way it doesn't feel as bad wasting this Dark Ritual if they do just happen to have a Veil of Summer. I don't know, I see Bayou these days, I just instantly think Storm. Like, I used to think things like Nick Fit, Jund, stuff like that. Yeah, they're... No, crop rotation. The fuck is this? Maverick? It is! Well, we take the Hex Mage. Or do we take the reanimate? They don't have double black to actually cast Hex Mage yet. So yeah, I think we actually take the reanimate. Unfortunately, they have the Dark Depth, so we definitely need to find a way to combo off ASAP. Because they are just eventually going to get to the point where they can just copy the Dark Depths. Because next turn we can take the Hex Mage. They're still slowly working their way up. There's a Verdant. So what are they doing? Did they drop another crop rotation? They gonna thought sees me? No, they're just gonna start life from the looming shit back. Okay. So if we get a black source, we can go ahead and take their vampire hex mage. Black source. Chromox is a black source. Well, we take the Hex Mage, so they have to do their shit the slow way. 
And we're gonna hope that we draw what we need. Because they're two turns away from actually being able to make a Merit Lage. So we'll be able to get two Urza Sagas in. Which are gonna be a 3-3, three, 4-4. Three, four, four. They're gonna be 5-5s. Five, five, but we still need a tutor. And depending on what we draw here, we might not even need to make another Construct. Like, if we draw a Tutor, we just fucking go for it. Tutor? No. Um... I mean, does our life total matter here? No. Our life total is irrelevant. And we are strictly going to go for um, card draw here. Like, we're not winning with Construct Beatdowns because Merrill Age can come down next turn. So we strictly want card draw. But we will not pop the Mishra's Bobble until after we attack. Because we want to drop the amount of Storm needed as much as possible. Do they have something they're going to try to... Are they flashing something in? Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm not particularly worried about that at all. Like, Bowmasters is not going to be what decides this match. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to come down to what are our top two cards. Like, that is what it is going to come down to. Urborg, okay. That's fine. That's another land. Alright, what's the top card of our deck? We need a tutor, and we need it now. Yep, there's Dark Depths. It, it's tutor or boss. That's all it comes down to. Is the top card of our deck a tutor? If it's a tutor, we win. If it's not, we lose. We got a 9 out of 48 hit right here. Tutor! Show me a tutor! Alright, they're making their dark depths. That's fine. Like I said, show me a tutor. That's all I need at this point. Tutor, come on. That's a tutor. Alright, that's three. Yeah, I got plenty in the graveyard here. Uh, go grab a Beseech, cast with Bargain, let's bargain away the Mox Opal. Grab a Gaia's Will, cast the Gaia's Will, cast the Mox Opal. Come back here, come back here, Graveyard, come on. Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Petal, Bobble, uh, already played a land. We're at 10. Cast with Bargain. Let's get rid of that. Oops, pay. Then get rid of that. Go grab the Tendies. And we Tendies them for lethal. There we go. Alright, we got game one. Woo! Alright. Alright, sideboard. Um, based off of what I'm seeing here, I actually kind of want to bring in the Leyline combo. Because, like, I kind of want access to both combos here, is the problem. But I don't know what I want to take out. <laughs> like, maybe this is going too deep and I need to just 100% be in race mode. I need to be like, okay, whatever. If they life from the loan, they life from the loan. They reanimate, they reanimate, whatever. Um, so it's like one of those things is like, should I just say fuck it and not bother? 
sideboarding with this is so fucking hard. I don't know why, but like sideboarding with traditional Saga Storm is so much easier than sideboarding with this Besiege version, and I don't know why, it just is. Okay, well, let's take out the Burning Wish. We got both combos of main board, so I don't think we need that. We can probably get rid of the Cabal Rituals, the bad ritual. Two more cuts. I'll cut one Chromox. Let's cut one Thoughtseize. Or, you know what? No, they're gonna Veil Summer. Cut two Thoughtseize. Keep the two Chromox in. I'll try something like that. They're gonna have Veils, which is another reason why I want the Helm in there, so that I have a way to get around a Veil. We'll see. Like I said, sideboarding with this deck is so fucking hard. Um, This is a tutor away from just being fucking bonkers. The question becomes is do we think we're going to get that tutor? But this is a fantastic hand otherwise. Like, if we hit a tutor, we're just fucking golden. We have so many of them. You know what? We're going to keep this. Our hand is relatively Thoughtseize proof, like, they can take whatever the fuck they want out of this hand, we literally just need a tutor. Like, losing the Dark Ritual would suck, but it's not the end of the world. Oh! So this is a really weird version of Turbo Devs. At least we stopped them from being able to, like, scam this shit, so I have a feeling that's what they kept this hand on, was they were gonna try to scam a Grief, and Leyline just shuts that the fuck down. So, I'm reading this as they have a reanimate in hand that is now a dead card. And we literally don't have creatures for them to reanimate either. Like I said, none of these cards are great for them to take, honestly. Like, yeah, the Dark Ritual is the best option here, but even that's not very good. What the fuck are they doing? Okay, I'm unsure what the point of that was. Do they have another grief they're just gonna hard cast? So, I mean, maybe they're not hardcore depths. Maybe they're just like something else. I, I don't know what that dark ritual is for. Okay, Pit the Needle naming Helm, I'm guessing. That only shuts off one of the combos, so. Yeah, that shows Helm, okay. That shuts off one of the combos, and they're wasting a bunch of mana. I guess they really want that uh, Lotus Petal. Another hell or another ley line, which we don't need a redundant ley line, so we can actually just go ahead and put that under here. Oh, let's just do this. Yeah, this is just a dead reanimate. Okay. So our opponent's in top deck mode. There was something to be said about running these pedals out, but our opponent's in top deck mode, and they just hit a land, so that's irrelevant. We're still basically just a tutor away from going the fuck off. I wouldn't hate a uh, Urza Saga either. Just start beating him down with Constructs. That's a Besiege. Is this enough to do it? It would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can actually Besiege twice, so this should be enough, right? Well, let's start counting this off. This is one, two, this would be three, four for another Beseech, five for another- I can actually Beseech away two things, so I can Beseech twice. Then I can recast all of this shit. I have a Dark Ritual in the graveyard. Yeah, this should be plenty. Oh, I don't have- actually, never mind. I don't have enough black- god damn it, this triple black in this is fucking annoying. This triple black cost keeps fucking with me. Okay. So we need another black source and then we can pop off. Alright, so now them potentially having a Veil of Summer is live. Which that would suck if they do. Well, that's a black source. Alright, we're going. And just so, Okay, it looks like they're F6. So now we can actually Besiege multiple times too. As long as we have, yeah, okay. We are good. Let's beseech away that. Beseech away that. Bargain that away. Um, why is it not letting me have control here? Okay, there we go. That on the stack. Now we just go fucking crazy. Yep, and we got there. Cool. 2 0 turbo depths. Let's go. Lost the dire roll again. 
So this is interesting in the sense that we have the Besiege, but the Tendrils in hand is kinda shitty. Um, I think we're gonna log in this. Can't keep this, because we're going to five. I mean, we keep the fuck out of this. Um, that being said... Throw Thoughtseize back. I guess they're gonna buy you back. I don't like going to five, but... I guess we'll see what the opponent's on. Hopefully they're on something, like, non-interactive. One Swift Teeth is a good start, but this also could mean, like, four-color suit bullshit. Green. It, okay. Um. I mean, if we can hit another free mana source, I think we just go off. Wish Claw Talisman is interesting. Our hope is that they don't just turn to Collector Ufus. If they do, we fucking cry. <laughs> like, Jund is scary, but the fact that we have another. Um. Whatchamacallit here helps a tutor. Oh, they're on something stompy. Oh, Minskin Boot. Okay, um, so we just gotta make sure that they don't have Veil of Summer and a whatchamacallit. So this is just like turbo initiative stompy, I'm guessing. So as long as they don't have like an Elvish Spirit Guide into a Veil of Summer, we're fucking golden. I guess an Endurance fucks this up, too, if they got one main deck. Because we don't have... Yeah, I don't have the mana to do everything I want to. Because I don't have the mana to be able to hand check them first. Because if I get something off of this Wishclaw Talisman, I need it to contribute to what I'm doing here, because I've only got five mana. I mean, yeah, fuck it. Came here to game, we're gonna fucking game, like... Just in case I need to do something crazy, I think I'll make... Well, no, because I need this to be black mana still. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab a dark Rit. Alright, it looks like they are f 6 Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, Beseech. Yeah, they're F6. So we can just chain a bunch of Beseeches together here. Cast Guy as well. Now we do the Graveyard Shenanigans. Start out with Mox Opal. Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond, Dark Rit. Um, the fact that I have so much mana here means I actually think I can do it again now. Oh fuck, I fucked that up. Um, I mean, fuck it. They're F6, so... We're just going for the tendies, going for the win. They didn't have it. Cool. That was kind of a fuck up. I think I had an option where I could have made it so that I could go uh, beseech into a duress to hand check them, but I accidentally sacked the lotus petal at the wrong time. Uh, that being said, up against what they're doing, they're just like a turbo Minskin Boo deck. Fatal Bush doesn't seem terrible. Abrupt Decay to take out Mana Dorks doesn't seem bad, but they don't have counters, and Fatal Push accomplishes the same thing. There's also something to be said about just powering out a real quick Empty the Warrens here, which I don't necessarily hate either. They're gonna have Endurance for Graveyard Hate, they're gonna just try to power something out as quickly as possible, and they're gonna have... Um... Ah, uh, fuck, what is it? They're gonna have a uh, Veil of Summer of their own. So, I can take out our Veils. They're not gonna have counters. Like, I kinda just wanna go as quickly as possible. I think I take out Wonder S. Most of their shit's gonna be creatures. Let's try something like that. See if a Juke into Empty the Warrens works. I mean, this is a turn one Beseech. 
Oh, wait, this is a turn one Beseech line, but they're beginning with seven. It kind of sucks this Empty the Warrens is in hand here. You know, we're gonna try it. It's a turn one Beseech Storm Kill in theory. We're gonna see what they got to try to fuck us over here. Like, if they got it, they got it. Whatever. Hopefully, okay, they're not just dumping their whole hand, so maybe we do play it a little bit slower here. Alright, let's see. Because what we could try to do here is wait a turn. Yeah, I think we're going to wait a turn. Do I want to bobble, though, is the question. Because if I wait until next turn, I can always beseech if they veil. I can pivot into and empty the Warren's plan and just try to drop a fuckload of tokens on the battlefield. I think we are going to bobble just for information, though. Like, it decreases our storm count by one. Okay, so we know that they have the Veil. So I think we are going to try to pivot into the Empty the Warrens plan and see what that does. Unfortunately, their creatures are going to be bigger. We're just going to hope that we can go wider. Rock Catria Triumph, that's interesting. If we draw... Oh! It's Applejacks? If we... <laughs> Fatal Push is kind of funny. Uh, we actually could try to Fatal Push him here if we wanted to. Try to force the action on this Lumberjack and see what happens. What's the worst that happens if we do that? So, like, if we pivot into the Empty the Warrens plan... I think we're going to wait one more turn. We're going to try... Force the action on this Lumberjack, see if they're counting on that. Or see if we can get this Veil out of their hand, because if we can get the Veil... No, they just let it go. Okay. Yeah, we're going to wait until next turn then, and then we're going to go for the Empty the Warrens plan. Like, maybe I'm just being irrationally scared of... Um... An Endurance or something here, but... Yeah, this is why I'm thinking they have an Endurance. It, this is very much screen. Okay. So, I can Thoughtseize and force the action out of this Veil of Summer. And then try to go for it? Worst case scenario, we just kind of get stuffed? I think we're gonna... We're gonna force the action as far as the Veil of Summer is concerned. Try to get that out of hand. Because the other thing is, is, if we can get the Veil of Summer out of hand, we might be able to just chain Besieches together to be able to go off naturally without needing our Graveyard. But we'll see. Well, we got a Veil out of hand, at least. Like I said, I'm very concerned about, like, an Endurance to stuff our Graveyard. Because I kind of just want them to tap out doing something, but I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean... What is this, a Minskinboo? Five mana. Luca. That's spicy. So let's have three cards here. Okay, interesting. Ooh, none of them are creatures. Okay. So they shouldn't have whatchamacallit up now. I guess we'll see what we draw. City traders? I mean, yeah, we just go for it. Fuck it. See if they're F6. They are not F6. We're gonna bargain away a bunch of shit and see if we can just... Okay, did they scoop it up? Maybe? Alright, they scooped it up, we got there! Alright, took down some kind of turbo... Gruel Planeswalker deck, I guess. I, I don't even know what that is, but cool deck! Sorry it got stomped. Alright, won the die roll, finally. Up against Shaman Cuck. Alright. Um, a whole bunch of mana and a thought series. We're gonna ship that. A bunch of mana into a Wishclaw Talisman. I don't hate that. 
The question is, is our Dark Ritual better under Chromox? Problem is, is this dies real hard to a uh, Force of Will, because I want to get the Wish Claw Talisman down on turn one. I think we're going to bend the Chromox. See if we can get the Wish Claw down on turn one and see what happens here. Or I could just bin one of the redundant lands, I suppose, as another option. Keep the Chromox to see if there's something, but I can't really think of anything that I want to put under the Chromox, to be honest. Like, at this point, anything we draw is kind of a live draw. So... Yeah, I think we're going to throw the Chromox to the bottom. We're going to attempt... A turn one Wish Claw Talisman and hope that it sticks. Okay, it's stuck. Got it. What's our opponent got? We are also at a point now where if they're on like some kind of Thoughtseize deck, we are kind of Thoughtseize proof. Wait, they could take a Dark Ritual, but whatever. Ooh. Something Stompy? Alright. Initiative? Oh, Goblins! Storm? This name sticker Goblin Storm? Okay, it's Goblin Stompy, um, so we shouldn't have to worry about counter magic then. And since we're not playing at Nauseam, our life total isn't hyper relevant here. We do need to worry about lock pieces come game two. Um, is this enough mana to go off? Because this is enough mana to Wish Claw Talisman to get a Besiege. Because that would be one, two. Besiege into Besiege is three. Into Gaia's Will is four. But I still don't have enough mana. I think we're going to wait one more turn, because I need enough mana to be able to Dark Ritual again. So we're going to hope that they can't go too crazy on turn three here. Like, as long as they don't hit Muxus into a fucking ridiculous shit out my entire deck, I think we're good. Okay, just another Goblin Ravel Master. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of damage. But we're not dead, and it means we're clear to go next turn. And depending on what we draw, we can go kind of crazy. Because we can actually do multiple Besieges in a row. Okay, into another Dark Ritual? Yeah, we're fucking golden. Yeah, we are super golden now. Um, grab a Siege. Because we can just start chaining Besieges to upper Storm Count. Now we need the guy as well. Dark Rit into Dark Rit into a Beseech for... So I'm just doing it so that I make sure that I have enough here because I can Beseech. Okay, they just scoop it up. They're not even going to make us do it. So I could have Beseech to go grab the Tendrils or I could have Beseech to go grab a Ritual to increase the Storm Count just to be safe. But we got there anyway, so kind of irrelevant. All right, sideboard-wise, Abrupt Decays in, Fatal Pushes in... Haywire my in. What do we take out? What the hell does goblins even have? Um, Veil of Summers can come out. Those are easy cuts. Uh, almost all of their cards are going to be creatures. I actually don't know how much... Seeing the fact that they had Dark Ritual, or uh, Rite of Flame, makes me think they probably actually don't have the lock pieces that I'm thinking they might have. So maybe we don't need the Haywire Might. But hey, where am I can get rid of a uh, Blood Moon if that becomes a problem? I have really no idea what they have for Graveyard Hate, so... We're just gonna submit the deck as is and see how it goes. Like, maybe they have Ley Lines and the Haywire Might is exactly what we need, but I don't know. Maybe I'm also focusing way too much on removal, and like, it's gonna be completely irrelevant. Um... Man, we'll keep this. This is... this is a pretty decent hand. No Leyline. 
We can thought see something. We can fatal push their first creature. Okay. Well, that is literally what I was talking about when I said Blood Moon was possibly a thing. Um. Well. Now I just need another, uh, whatchamacallit, and I have an answer, so... I guess we'll see what they do here. I just need another zero-drop artifact, and then I have an answer for Blood Moon, and my hand gets turned back on. Board Master, okay. I mean... That is a thing. That turns everything on, and now it unlocks my hand, so... Because the funny part is, too, is, like, if I want to, I can go ahead and just... Okay, well, two Blood Moons is a thing, I guess. Um... <laughs> okay, opponent, you, you clearly wanted it more. Well, we're just gonna blow that up, then. I mean, the nice part is, is, like, I have mana, so... It's not like I'm just fucked. Okay, Squee kinda sucks. Um... Another Dark Ritual is interesting. Because what, until your next turn? Yeah. I mean, we take the War Chief, they get a Squee. We get in for one. We're basically at a point now where it's like, if we get a Tutor, we win. Because we still have black mana functionally, as long as they can't get rid of this Haywire Might. Yep, there's Squee. Like I said, we are effectively at a point where it's like, again, tutor or bust. Tutor? Nope. I mean, we're gonna get in just to make sure so that our storm count doesn't have to be as high. And again, we're we're in tutor or bust mode, so we're gonna see what happens. War Chief, okay. And new battle cry goblin, okay. Well, like I said, it's tutor or bust, let's go. Alright, come on, tutor, let's see it. OP is empty handed, show me the tutor. That's a tutor. I've got enough of these that I can actually still cast a bunch of shit with Morgan. Do that, Morgan that away. Um, I'm at four. I actually should just have enough to be able to go from the graveyard without even needing to, so let's go ahead and grab the guy as well. Cast that. Um, Dark Ritz. Dark Ritz. Bromox for mana again. And we got there! Took down Goblins 2-0! I like it! Alright, final round. Won the die roll. 42 Crooked Sporks. Let's go. Um, yeah. We keep the shit out of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll just keep this. Uh, we're gonna bobble first. To see if it's safe to play our shit out is basically what's gonna happen here. And see like what direction we wanna go with this. Alright, they are on a turbo something as well. So in that case then, we're gonna go ahead and play Urza Saga. It looks like they're F6. And then basically we try to go off next turn. Okay, I like Veil. Uh, we'll see what they do. I'm assuming there's some kind of Storm variant as well. Hopefully they don't have the turn one. Alright, there's the pedal we knew about. Okay, okay, maybe not. Maybe they're... Oh, it's Goblins again! Did somebody, like, just spike a tournament with Goblins? Legion War Boss, okay. Um, that means we definitely go off next turn. Okay, yeah. If we hit a ritual, it's even fucking better. Duress? Alright, do we have the mana to go off? We go... Tap all of this shit. Go grab the first Besiege. That's one... Besiege. Probably get rid of Urza Saga. 
Beseech two, get rid of Vault of Whispers. Beseech three to go get um uh Gaia's Will. Gaia's Will is four. Five, six, seven. Uh, just enough to beseech again. I think I need to wait one more turn. Yeah, we're gonna wait one more turn. See what they got going on over there. I think I need one more mana. Okay, yeah, we're, we're not dead next turn anyways. So I think we're good. All right, Mountain. I'm assuming this means Battlecry Goblin. To try to do more damage, yeah. Okay, so we should be good. This is a lot of damage, but... So we go for it this turn. Hopefully we draw a free spell. A land. Okay, tap for mana. Okay, this is going to be a free spell. It's just a question of what do we want. I think we need Lion's Eye Diamond. So, does this give me the mana to be able to Veil first? Yes. Just to increase Storm Count? Yeah. I'm, I'm like overthinking this. We had it like a bajillion fucking times over. Let's open again. Bottle, pedal, LED, LED. Veil of Summer. And they scoop it up. They, they see the line. They see that I got it. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, waiting the extra turn to be able to add Veil of Summer to this combo was 100% the correct option. Alright, so we're up against Goblins again. So, I mean, I guess we just do the same thing. Um, Veils were literally just there for Storm Count. Bring in Haywire Might. Uh, take out some number of duresses because all of their shit is creatures anyways. Basically just try to do that again and hope that we can just turn one of them or something. I don't know. Again, I have no idea what the hell Goblins has in their sideboard, but we're going to give that a shot. I mean, this is a fantastic hand, so we're keeping this. If they turn one Blood Moon us, like, it shuts off all of our mana, but... We came here to party, so we're gonna fucking party. Ooh, no turn one play. I like that a lot. Into another Beseech? Alright, um... We are going to bobble you first. See what you're drawing. There's Blood Moon. So can we stop their fast mana is going to be the question, because that Blood Moon fucks us. We're going to try. Um, oh, they... Oh, they're going to try to Trinisphere us. Okay. I guess we do that and see. See if we can lock them under their own Trinisphere. Unfor oh shit, I should have fucking played out this Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm an idiot. Okay, so this version does have more hate pieces. So... I'm assuming this is Trinisphere. Yep, okay. So we need to find our whatchamacallit. Uh, our Haywire Might to go off. I mean, speaking of which, like, fuck it. <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, we're still not in a great position here, because we still need to be able to stop this Blood Moon from coming down. Because if they Blood Moon in it- well, then again, if they Blood Moon in addition to this, they might just lock themselves out of playing. So they've got to be very careful about what they do here. Okay, apparently we're just playing this game, got it. Well, now I need... Me and Urza Saga. Jesus Christ, our opponent runs hot as fuck here. Um, alright. Hopefully we can just keep them off red mana, or if they get red mana, they never find another land. So, like, they play their battle cry. Oh, they have red mana for battle cry goblins, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Rebel Master, okay. So 
So they still don't have real red mana. Duress, okay. Uh, but that gets them their red mana, which shuts it down. Yeah, I think we're just done on this one. Like, the double Trinisphere. Like, they actually had triple Trinisphere, but... Alright, we run it back. There, There's nothing they can do, so... Like, there, there's no point in changing the sideboard at all. Alright, let's see if we can just snap off a turn one here. That is not a turn one. If I had a tutor, this would be great, but I don't. I mean, I guess we're going to keep this, put Gaia's Will to the bottom, put LED to the bottom for now. Like, we're relying on these fucking popping off for us, hopefully. Uh, see what they're drawing. Goblin Warchief. I'm hoping that doesn't mean they have multiple. We bottom the lines, I diamond. Hopefully, this doesn't mean they have multiple transfers. All right, so they drew. What are they drawing next turn? All right, there's name sticker goblin. So our hope is is that they don't have like a turn one hate piece, and we can just pop off next turn. That is starting off with a chance of a turn one hate piece. Okay, just, just a Goblin Warchief, that's fine. That's actually super fine, assuming we can hit a tutor off of some of these draws. Okay, another line's of a tutor just fucking wins us the game right here. That is not a tutor. Uh, I am going to run all of this shit out now, though, before they get a chance to drop a Trinisphere. So this Namesticker Goblin is going to be kind of insane, potentially, but we'll see. Like, we're still at a point where a tutor off the top just fucking gets us there. Yep, there's Namesticker Goblin. How high do they roll? Six. Damn. Into a Rabs. Okay. What's your last card? Nothing. Okay. That is a lot of damage. Tutor? Tutor? Come on, Tutor. Tutor. Yes! Okay. Unless that last card is a Mind Break Trap, we're fucking golden. I mean, I guess they, uh, if they got Surgical Extraction. No! <laughs> it was a fucking Mind Break Trap. God damn it. All right. You got us, Pony. You got us. Good game. We got caught by Mind Break Trap, but it happens sometimes. It's fucking everywhere with Storm, so good game, Pony. Good game. So what can we say about Beseech the Mirror in Saga Storm? In all honesty, in all of the testing I've been doing, I felt like I'm missing ad nauseum, as weird as that sounds. The math for Beseech the Mirror is just... It's not what I'm used to. I'm sure as I play with it more, I will be more used to the math involved with that one. Uh, you saw there were sometimes I was kind of struggling how many spells I was casting to make sure I had enough for my graveyard with the guy as well. And then the triple black screwed with me. Um... Even though it's only four mana, getting that initial triple black is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, being able to crack Lion's Eye Diamonds in response to a Infernal Tutor to get the correct colors of mana you need before finding your payoff tutor or your payoff spell, such as Ad Nauseum, actually meant a lot. Um, not being able to do that you definitely saw the tension. Like, you could count to enough mana. Like, oh, I have enough mana to be able to go off now. Oh, wait, shit. I don't have the triple black until after I pop the LED. So there's a little bit of weird math going on with this. Um, this was just kind of like a initial thought with this deck. It's definitely not a final version. It could definitely use to be tuned. Um, 
I don't know if the green needs to be there or not. Um, it might run a little bit smoother if it didn't. We never really ran into issues as far as needing the splash colors of green or red or anything. So maybe that's not something that needs to be addressed. Maybe all of the splash colors can be in the sideboard or something. I don't know, but I was just figuring with all the blue temple decks running around, I was going to try a green splash to be able to throw a Veil of Summer and Abrupt Decay to be able to deal with stuff. But, I mean, the deck is still fun. Storm still does things. Um, I have noticed while I've been playing that it seems like a lot of the Storm players have been transi transitioning over to the Epic Storm with Song of Creation and Beseech instead of the Black Saga Storm that was running around prior to Beseech being spoiled, which, I don't know. Um, I figure this is kind of the perfect home for it because you've got so much artifacts energy to make sure that you always have things to bargain away to the Beseech. So maybe i haven't really seen a ton of people screwing around with this that much um in the black shell so maybe i'm gonna mess with it some more maybe it's just some more reps it felt clunkier than the turbo ad nauseum version that existed before beseech the storm or beseech the mirror <laughs> but the deck played fun you saw some great lines there um that last match we we got got by my break trap and it's everywhere because there's so many people playing these storm decks between beseech the mirror and mine's desire being on band storm is everywhere so i mean it is what it is you're gonna run into a ton of storm hate uh it also falls to all the artifact hate that's going around too we didn't really see much of that um and it seems like that's a little bit more on the downswing lately but overall it's fun beseech the mirror is as powerful as advertised it is exactly what i think storm needed um not that storm really needed anything before it was still definitely a tier one deck before this but this is just another great consistency tool it is more deterministic than ad nauseum or mind's desire so it's great if you want a deterministic this is going to kill you i'm not relying on the top of my deck i don't have to worry about my life total i don't have to worry about the randomness of mind's desire it's the perfect storm card in my opinion it is absolutely fantastic Anyways, I hope y'all had fun. If you did, hit that like and sub button below. It's free. It supports the content that I create. Make sure you have your notifications turned on to know when I'm dropping new videos. If you really like what you see, go ahead and check out the Twitch as well. Drop a sub over there. Uh, make sure your notifications are turned on. I don't really have a set schedule over there, so I just kind of pop on randomly when I can. Um, hopefully y'all had fun. I got some more videos coming down the pipeline here. I'm hoping to crank out a few before I go on vacation, so I got content still coming for you. But make sure to check out the old videos, too, if you like what you're seeing here. And I will catch you all in the next video. And as always, miners, stay salty.